Welcome to the module describing the key features and functionality of an inline bypass switch. In this module, you will explore the general use for and specific features of an inline bypass switch. At the end of this module, you will be able to describe how and why an inline bypass switch is deployed. List the ways in which network and security reliability is improved when using inline bypass. Describe the general features available from an inline bypass solution. Describe the physical and logical bypass options. Explain how inline bypass works with GigaSecure and GigaSmart offerings. A typical organization implements perimeter security on any internet-facing link, and sometimes on internal links between lower and higher security environments. This perimeter security is manifested as an inline device, ranging from a firewall to an IPS, DLP, or malware box, and sometimes several types in series. All traffic must be evaluated by the inline device before an allow-deny decision is made. As a means for protecting things, this is a great approach. However, if that inline device requires maintenance or experiences a failure, then the link it is protecting either goes down or is forced to operate without the security-related protections offered by that inline device. There are many challenges related to using inline security. First, as just mentioned, if the inline device experiences a failure, then the production link is usually brought down. The failure could be as simple as a failed fan, or it could be more serious, like a bad power supply. Often, the inline tool must be removed and replaced, or cabled around in order to restore operation of the production path. It is not unusual to have more than one inline device in series, where traffic approved by one is passed to a second for additional inspections. When a series of tools is present, then any single failure in the series will take down the production link. You have introduced multiple points of failure, and all traffic is required to pass through each inline device, whether or not it needs to. Sometimes the inline device is still up, but has stopped forwarding traffic. This condition is usually much worse than a hard down failure, because the network does not know to fail over to an alternate high availability path or to send any type of alert. For some lower speed links and most higher speed links, it is easily possible to configure sufficient deep packet inspection rules that the inline device cannot keep up with traffic volumes. For example, having a 10 gigabit interface does not guarantee that traffic can be inspected at a 10 gigabit line rate, and the actual capacity may be much less than line rate. The typical default setting is to forward uninspected packets for the traffic which exceeded available inspection capacity. The alternative is to drop the excess packet volume but this will cause user sessions to hang or to fail and require a session restart. Does your security profile tolerate forwarding uninspected packets into the production network? All traffic is required to pass through each inline device, whether or not it needs to. This constitutes an inefficient use of CPU resources. It would be better if site-to-site -site traffic or other trusted traffic could be allowed through without contributing to the oversubscription problem, but most inline devices lack settings for this. In fact, since some tools are licensed according to how much traffic is inspected, this trusted traffic is costing extra every month. When an inline bypass switch is added to the configuration, the inline security or perimeter security device is moved away from the production path. The obvious question is, how does that help me? The first way in which inline bypass helps is in maintaining access through the production link. Most organizations are so dependent upon reliable traffic flow that when given the choice, they would prefer to keep the production link operating without security, while security is being restored, rather than to have the link go down for even a short time. When an inline bypass switch is present, tools can be maintained or replaced while traffic is forwarded through the production link uninspected. A simple command places an inline tool in logical bypass, so traffic continues through the production link and is not forwarded to the problem inline tool. When a series of tools is present, without an inline bypass switch, then loss of any one tool causes the entire chain to go down. With an inline bypass switch, the production link and all of the other inline tools can remain operational in the presence of individual tool failures or removal. Because of fail-safe protections, even loss of power to the inline bypass switch itself will not bring down the production link. The other way in which inline bypass helps is to improve the reliability of security measures protecting the link. It is comparatively easy to oversubscribe a single tool at moderate to high link speeds. A significant advantage offered by inline bypass technology is the ability to divide the traffic inspection burden between like tools so that all of the traffic is properly inspected. Entire conversations are directed to a specific tool so that stateful inspection is possible. 
The next stage of reliability is achieved by having a hot spare tool configured and waiting to be swapped in in place of a failing tool. If more tools fail, then the traffic stream distribution can be rebalanced across the remaining active tools. For tools which have specific inspection functionality, it is possible to direct only that type of traffic to the tool and send all other traffic past that tool in order to best utilize CPU resources. If there is already inspected and trusted traffic coming in by VPN or other means from remote sites, then that traffic can be sent through directly, again conserving deep packet inspection resources for suspect traffic. When appropriate, any combination of tool failures can be set to force network failover so that a redundant path such as with HSRP or VRRP is activated. In summary, even though inline tools are able to operate satisfactorily without an inline bypass solution, moving inline devices off the production network path via an inline bypass switch increases reliability in many ways. A redundant arrangement of two Gigaview HC2 nodes can maintain traffic monitoring by inline tools when one of the nodes is down. With the Gigamon Resiliency for Inline Protection, or GRIP, feature, a bypass switch deployment in series can ensure continued traffic inspection. Specifically, if one Gigaview HC2 node were to lose power, then the second Gigaview HC2 would take over sending inline traffic for inspection. This graphic is drawn showing a single IPS which can monitor two links. In the normal configuration, the first, or green Gigaview HC2, is forwarding inline traffic to the IPS for inspection. The second, or yellow Gigaview HC2, is in resiliency standby and is not forwarding traffic to the IPS. If the first Gigaview HC2 loses power, then the second Gigaview HC2 becomes active and automatically starts forwarding inline traffic to the IPS for inspection. The range of choices available from Gigamon inline bypass switch are hard to grasp at a glance. Trying to list them as a quick summary risks leaving out critical aspects of this functionality. However, here is a quick overview of most of the major aspects. First, all of the features are available whether they are configured for an available pair of 1, 10, 40, or 100 gigabit ports, or 1 or 10 gigabit ports when configured on the custom hardware intended to ensure that the production link never goes down. Any packet passing through the inline bypass ports is available for inspection in line and also for monitoring out of band in almost any combination of inspections. In addition, in situations where multiple inline networks are aggregated before forwarding traffic to an inline tool for inspection, it is possible to assign specific VLAN IDs to each monitored path to ensure that traffic is returned to the correct path. One or several production links can be sent to a single powerful inline tool, or the traffic can be divided among multiple inline tools to ensure that all packets are properly inspected. Packet inspection can be done using just one inline tool, inspection can be performed by multiple tools operating in parallel, or inspection can be queued in a specific series of inline tools before approved packets continue through to the original destination. For the highest level of security reliability, a spare inline tool can be configured as a ready substitute for any failed tool in the same group. Substitution of the failed tool takes place automatically. Determination of tool health is made by monitoring for active link and optionally by injecting packets into the traffic stream to ensure that inspection and packet forwarding is still taking place. In the event a tool or an HC2 node in grip configuration is considered to be down, then a variety of failover actions can be set. The failover actions range from how to handle the production link to how the tool, tool group, or member of a group or series should be dealt with to having a standby HC2 node take over when the primary node fails. With these and other configuration options to choose from, it is evident that the inline bypass feature set can accommodate almost any requirement. All of the inline bypass features can be configured using standard Gigaview HC2 hardware as logical bypass. The key difference between physical and logical bypass is found in the special circuits that maintain production network path if the Gigaview HC2 loses power. If the continued operation of a production link is of utmost importance, then a physical bypass solution is needed. When security is more important than keeping the production link operating, then the logical bypass is a good option and requires no custom hardware. Under routine operation, traffic enters a physical bypass switch and is then forwarded over to the inline tool. The inline tool performs its normal allow-deny inspection process and approved traffic is sent back and on into the network. This forwarding and inspection occurs bi-directionally, of course, which is one of the major differences between inline monitoring and out-of-band monitoring. Additional monitoring and security visibility is available by simultaneously sending a copy of passing packets to out-of-band monitoring tools. 
An inline tool does not have to be attached to the inline bypass module, but it must be on the same chassis as the inline network ports. Out of band tools can be anywhere on that same node or on any node in cluster. The custom hardware ports on a fiber inline bypass module can be configured as either 1 or 10 gigabit bypass port pairs, and the copper tap ports can be configured as 1 gigabit bypass port pairs. For logical bypass configurations, any two same speed ports on the same node can be configured as inline network ports. Similarly, any two same speed ports on the same node can be configured as inline tool ports. The copper tap module supports inline bypass operation, but only as protected inline network port pairs and not for inline tools. Any ingress port can be the source of an out of band map. Since each inline bypass port is bidirectional, that means that any inline network or inline tool port can also be the traffic source for out of band monitoring. Ordinarily, the inline network ports are copied for out of band monitoring, but the inline tool ports could also be used. Choosing one pair over the other lets you select uninspected traffic before it goes to the IPS or inspected traffic after it has been allowed by the IPS. You can verify inline tool performance. One of the biggest challenges facing inline security tools is keeping up with appropriate deep packet inspection as network speeds increase. As the trade press has often pointed out, just because it has a 10 gigabit port, that doesn't mean it can handle 10 gigabits of traffic. As speeds increase to 40 gigabit and 100 gigabit, this problem grows worse. The proven method to resolve this problem is to add more inline tools and share the load across them. Traffic distribution to inline tools uses the same underlying technology as Gigastream with all the same layer 2 to layer 4 settings. Also like Gigastream, when one inline tool goes down, the traffic can be redistributed to the other tools in the group. When the physical bypass is activated, the upstream and downstream traffic is forwarded directly through as if the bypass switch was a simple cable. The internal circuitry is completely bypassed and no traffic is sent to the inline or out of band tools. While a secondary use is to permit inline tool maintenance without dropping the production network path, the main use case is when power is lost to the Gigaview HC2 chassis. A protected inline network port pair ensures that production network links stay up. Logical bypass is determined by the health of the inline tool. When the link is lost for the inline tool, the heartbeat test fails or you manually activate it, the inline tool is determined to be down. At this point, there are three actions you can take. The first option is to bypass the traffic and send it on to the production network. The second option for failover when the inline tool is determined to be down is to bring the network links down. This allows the network to fail over to a redundant path where another set of inline tools are monitoring traffic. The third option is to drop the traffic, but there are few common use cases for this. When dealing with an inline tool group where traffic is split between the set of tools so oversubscription does not occur, you can set the minimum number of tools required for the group. If the number of healthy tools drops below the minimum, then the failover action is taken. So far, all of the failover actions depend on the inline tool behavior. Some actions can also be configured for behavior of the inline network ports. For example, if link loss is detected on the downstream network switch port, then the upstream router port can also be forced down. This allows a high availability configuration such as VRRP or HSRP to reroute traffic to an alternate parallel network path. Logical bypass also works if you choose not to use the BPS module. This is a standard software feature that does not require a separate license. In fact, all the software features can be used without the inline bypass module. The one key function that the physical protection bypass ports add is the ability to ensure that the production link does not go down, a feature which may be inappropriate for some high security environments. Use logical bypass ports for this situation. Another really useful feature is to wire for inline, but to operate the inline tool as if it were out of band. A lot of organizations depend so heavily upon the production network link that they operate IPS inline tools as if they were IDS monitoring tools. Monitoring mode allows users to wire up a tool as if it were inline, but only send it traffic as if it were out of band. This allows the inline tool to be either continuously operated out of band or to configure it, test it, verify it is catching all the things it needs to catch and behaving the way it needs to behave. Once the inline tool is behaving and reporting what it should, then consider switching from monitoring to full inline operation. Change from monitoring mode to full inline mode with a single software configuration change. This is particularly useful at remote sites where it can save you the cost of a truck roll. 
Improvements in production network reliability and security reliability have been illustrated through the addition of an inline bypass feature set. During these descriptions, the ability to simultaneously have inline tools inspect traffic for the allow-deny decision and also to have the same packet stream duplicated for out-of-band monitoring and security. Once that packet stream is duplicated, then the same traffic can be reviewed by other parts of a multi-tier security architecture. Of particular note is the ability to groom out-of-band traffic for improved consumption by these other tool suites. When the GigaSmart packet modification and transformation feature set is added to the other features for sending the right traffic to each type of tool, then the complete power of a visibility fabric solution is fully realized. Please review the GigaSmart feature overview module to gain a better understanding of the growing number of services and applications provided by GigaSmart. Full use of a visibility fabric feature set increases tool performance, broadens network visibility through a variety of features, and reduces costs through use of many of those same features. Deploying security tools to address present and future threats can be problematic. There are multiple points of failure, traffic bottlenecks, and scalability challenges. By using the GigaSecure Secure Delivery Platform, the industry's first security delivery platform, Gigamon addresses these challenges by maximizing tool efficacy, letting them focus on the traffic and threats that pose the most risk, scaling to keep up with network speeds. When overburdened, inline tools may allow some traffic to pass without inspection rather than impact network latency and application performance. Allowing tools to be swapped out without taking down your network. Inline tools can be bypassed so that you do not have to wait for a maintenance window. Consolidating inline tools in series into a single bypass protected solution. Sharing inline traffic with out-of-band tools and transforming it to meet multiple needs. Broadly speaking, integrating all your best-in-class security tools into a multi-tiered, zero-trust security strategy. For more information about GigaSecure, refer to the GigaSecure training module. Additional details about inline bypass can be found in the inline bypass configuration training module, the GigaSecure training module, and the Gigamon webpages related to security, in the GigaView HC2 datasheet and product brochure, in the HView web interface online help topics, and in the user guides. In this module, you have explored the general use for and specific features of an inline bypass switch. You are now able to describe how and why an inline bypass switch is deployed. List the ways in which network and security reliability is improved when using inline bypass. Describe the general features available from an inline bypass solution. Describe the physical and logical bypass options. Explain how inline bypass works with GigaSecure and GigaSmart offerings. This completes the inline bypass training module. Thank you.